Oh, I see you made it to part two of this video. If you haven't watched part one, it's 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 it exists because if this video exists, then part one exists. So you should watch part one first if you haven't, because then it will it'll you'll get the full thing. Oh god, I split it in two because otherwise it was too too long. I thought. And I didn't want it too long. And anyway, this is part two. Go watch part one if you haven't. Okay, great. Bye. This is my the third and final Australian act on this list. It's Alex Leahy's "You Love Me Like a Brother." Sorry, it's "I Love You Like a Brother." So this album, when I first listened to it, I was like, "Shit, is this?" this gonna be my album of the year but it's not so like it's in the top few but it's being it's on this list like it's it's in the top few albums of my year of the of this year but not the top it's first kind of a pop punk rock I don't know I'm bad with genres I don't know I just kind of said some shit um, as the first whatever genre it is that I've listened to in a while and it was fucking good. I fucking loved every second of it. So it's Alex Leahy's debut LP. Um, she did have an EP released in 2016 apparently. When I first heard the song from the EP called You Don't Think You Like People Like Me, I really enjoyed the like punky pop rock vibe that it had and that it was, you know, back in the lady radio and led by a fucking female singer. Then I heard she released a debut album and I was like, cool, and neat. Then one day when I was walking to work, which is about an hour's long walk, I decided I would listen to some new music that I had. Um, and this particular day I chose Alex Leahy and holy fuck, I'm glad I did. Holy fuck. It is such a fucking good album. <laughs> like most albums, it's about 40 minutes long. So what I did is I listened to the album and then I let it repeat and then on my way home I did the same thing I let I played it from where it was and then I let it repeat until I got home so I listened to it like three and a half times or something like that fuck dude like one of the first times in a long time that an album has got me instantly hooked like first listen through and I'm like fuck yes this is good I'm not sure why it hooked me. I don't know if it was like the ma the subject matter of the songs or just like it was cool riffs or female Whoa! Standout track. So my favourite track from the album is I Haven't Been Taking Care of Myself. Um, other standout songs um, are Backpack, Every Day's the Weekend, Oxford Exchange, and Let's Call It A Day. Honestly, it's, it's just all good. It's just all good, dude. If you're into that sort of shit. Foster the People for Pumped Up Kicks. But if you listen to the album that Pumped Up Kicks is from, Pumped Up Kicks sounds super different quality wise and style wise and stuff compared to the rest of the album. I think I read somewhere that they recorded the song on like a fucking tape recorder or fucking their phone or something like that. And when it came to recording the album, they decided to keep that song how it was. But then yeah, listening to the rest of the album, it's like a higher quality and they use synthy shit and it's a lot different. It's a fucking good album. Then Foster the People a few years ago released their second album, Supermodel. Now probably because of the first album I was pretty hyped. I feel like second albums can make or break a band and or artist. And in this case it was closer to the breaking the artist for me. I didn't dislike it, but I didn't like it as much as that first album. I liked a few songs from it, but I, could, I fucking don't remember the rest of the album. You know, it's just whatever. And now in 2017, Foster People are back with the release of their third album, Sacred Hearts Club. They fucking nailed it. They fucking nailed it, dude. They It's like they took the sound, general sound of their first album, and drew upon that. It's pretty much like the sa same old Foster the People, yet they've grown as artists still, they've become, I don't know, they've matured, they've just fucking just 
better. This album to me was another, like I was walking to work album and decided to listen to it. Same thing happened as to what happened with Alex Leahy, where I was listening to it and then was like, nah, I'm repeating this Spicy Boys album. So yeah, I get to see these guys, Fossil People, in a music festival I'm going to over New Year's called Falls Festival. When I first saw the lineup for Falls, I saw that they were on there and I was like, oh yeah, that's cool, but now that I've listened to their new album, I'm fucking pumped to see them. Like, I'm fucking gonna be a be a pumped up kicks to go see them. I tried to pun, it didn't work out. And I also got tickets to their sideshow, so uh, I'll be ideally seeing them twice within a week. The same with everything, everything, but it depends on if I can get time off work. So my favorite track would have to be Sit Next To Me. It's just like this pleasant, wholesome sounding song. It could be like wrong, I'm bad at like listening to lyrics properly. Other standout songs are Pay The Man and Doing It For The Money, and the first two tracks on the album. Static Space Lover, Loyal Like Sit and Nancy which like is a weird song it's just super different to the rest of it it's cooler and then the last track of the album three it's a spicy boy Can see it in your the so this is the second time these guys are on this list. This album actually came out this year. My rules were the albums I listened to this year. Oh, that's my rule. But this one came out this year as well. So Woodstock by Portugal the Man. This fucking album. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. Mm. Let me let me talk about it for a while. Before the album's release, Portugal the Man put out a song called Noise Pollution, which is the final track on this album. I've written uh, here, it's got that feel to it where you just kind of dance a bit by going side to side, and there's also lots of rhyming. So like in the film clip, when they put it out, you know, it's, it's, you know, at some point, the girl is like, I fucking, probably because it was the first song they released for the album, it's, I think it's my favorite. It is one of those albums where I just fucking love every song on it. If I had to pick a least favorite song, probably Rich Friends. That's not saying that it's a bad song, it's just, I don't know, it's like, you're all, if you have a fucking, you're always gonna have a least favorite, even if it's fucking good. I've written here just comparatively to the rest of the album, it, I feel like it doesn't hold up as much. Like with other albums on this list, there's been a number of standout songs, but this album, every song is a standout song. Nice. So there's a video I watched on the Portugal The Man YouTube channel of two guys, the main, I guess it's the main two guys from Portugal The Man. I don't really know what the deal is with band members. They mentioned that there was quite a, there was what, four years between their last album and this album said that they've been, they've released an album every year since they started as a band. I found it kind of interesting considering, you know, to me the minimum amount of time between album releases is like two years. That is my standard, but it's, Obviously not the case with everyone. And they also said there was kind of they were kind of annoyed of spending a lot of time on songs. They just felt as though they'd spent way too much time on songs and they should have just fucking did it and released it. They found it kind of humorous because they spent so much time on these songs getting them perfect, but then they wrote Feel It Still in a fucking hour. And it's one of it's like their most famous song. It's one of those songs that I've seen, you know, playing out in public on a at the fucking gym on the TV or in fucking subway I saw it as well. It's a fucking cool song. It's got a real cool bass line. It gets fucking stuck in your head. So Feel It Still, I think they released before they album release. I thought, you know, it would fit really well for an ad with that bass line. Like, have I heard this before? I don't know. Shout out to Zach for introducing me to these these motherfuckers. Illy Bay to Zach. Illy Bay, Illy Bay. Okay, so we're now to our, my final album of the year. A lot of people probably saw this coming. A few people who know me probably saw this coming. And I feel like it's the top of a lot of people's lists, uh, having seen some lists of some people by now. But Lord's Melodrums. <laughs> Holy shit. I fucking love Lord's first album, Pure Error. It took me a little while to actually first listened to it, but when I did, fucking loved it. Like, I, I'm almost certain it was a, you know, had to listen to it a couple of times to actually love it, but it's a good fucking album. Maybe two years 
Three years passed, I don't, I don't know, whatever. And then suddenly she was on the lineup for Coachella. This probably means that she is releasing new music soon. And then maybe, I don't know, I don't know the time frame, but not too long before Coachella, she released Song Greenlight and then she released Liability. When I first listened to Greenlight, I was a bit like, holy shit, this is way fucking different to her first album. It's far more poppy. So I was a little hesitant. So in the lead up to Melodrama being released, I read somewhere or saw or heard something that Lord said that the album was about a single night out and that it was about the different emotions one goes through when when hitting the clubs when i got the album i tried listening out for that type of vibe that she mentioned in this interview or whatever i didn't quite get it at first i'm bad at listening to lyrics generally slash getting the deeper meaning unless they're fucking blatantly obvious but for what she said i was like okay i'm gonna try and listen out to the lyrics Woo! so i can try and get this vibe for a while it took me a while to get said vibe so i don't really know how long it took me before i decided what she actually meant by the night out vibe and it wasn't necessarily about the lyrics but more about the feel the flow of the album my point is the sounds of the album how each song sounds kind of can be put to each different emotion one goes through when they've gone out for a night. Green light is fucking just fucking in your face. You're pumped. You're like, yeah, I'm going out. I'm going to, I'm going to get them. And then the Louvre happens. The night starts to kind of, you're not pumped, but you're like down here. You're still kind of positive, but you can very easily go depressed. And then you had one too many drinks and everything just kind of fucking sucks. The whole middle of the album, you're just like, man, this, this, is, this is not a great time, you know? It's just shit. I feel like shit. All my friends hate me. I just wish I was not here because fuck this shit. It's just kind of like you're there. You're out. You're just kind of there because you feel as though you have to be. Sometimes. No, not all the time. But sometimes. You can pick yourself back up to end the night on a fucking good note. The fucking final track of the album is fucking in your face again and you're like, shit dude. The song is called Perfect Places and then the last line of the whole album is what the fuck are Perfect Places. Basically, I fucking love this album, holy shit. It's an amazing follow up to Lord's first album. You can really hear the difference in the writing. Obviously, like she herself has grown up. Her first album was when written when she was like 16 or something. And you can hear that in the writing and like the music and more than just synths, there's actual there's fucking piano in one of the songs. So as for favorite tracks on the album, I think Perfect Places is my favorite. Close second would probably have to be Liability. Liability, cause I can relate to it. I feel. And the reason I think Perfect Places is one of my favorites is because it's got that kind of similar vibe to it as the song Team from her first album. A special shout out to Supercut, the song Supercut, where according to a random online Facebook ad quiz, I am that song. I am that Lord song. Oh, and the song uh, Hard Feelings slash Loveless is just it's pretty cool. It's one of those albums where I fucking love every song though. Much like Woodstock for Portugal the Man, it's just fucking spicy boys. It's just every song is fucking solid. But during the month of November, I got to see Lord play twice. The first show was at the Sydney Opera House. It was a cool venue, and I'm really fucking glad I went. It was a great show. But the downside to this show was because it was in Sydney and outside, there was noise restrictions. There are noise restrictions because fucking rich white people decided to buy and build some apartments near the Opera House and then complain about noise from the Opera House despite them going there last and the opera house being there for fucking forever. You know, it's fucking their motherfucking cunts. The gig being kind of quiet meant that I could hear the girls behind me singing really badly, piercing into my soul. Then a few days later, I saw her at a music festival in my own city called Spilt Milk. And Lord was the headliner and the reason I bought a ticket to go to the festival, because uh, if you've been to a music festival, they can fucking suck, because it's like an entire day and you're all like, oh, fuck. Lord was the last person to play on the main stage, hence headliner. Um, and Alice in Wonderland, a DJ, was the last person to play on the other stage. And holy fuck! Holy fuck, dude! Holy fucking shit! It was such a good fucking show! The music was actually loud. The crowd at the Spilt Milk show were actually, like, into it, you know? They seemed to be far more into it than they were in Sydney. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but it could have been that it was the end of the festival, so everyone was fucking using all their energy, or... what, but they were fucking into it, which... I was like, Yurr! this show, this fucking spilt milk music festival show of Lords, fucking like 
one of the best live shows I've ever been to. Holy shit, it was good. I mean, there have been other shows that I've been to that were real good because I fucking love the band or artist, but this show, like, obviously I have complete bias because I fucking love Lord and music and stuff. It was just a fucking good, solid show. It was, as I said, one of the best shows I've ever been to. And honestly, that made me rethink my albums of the year. Initially, I had Woodstock as solid number one with Melodrama just very closely behind. Having seen those shows, I'm gonna put them in equal. Equal albums of the fucking year. And the main reason for all that is because I got to see Lord live. I got to see her do what she does. Whereas I didn't get to see Portugal, man. It may sound dumb, but seeing Lord play her music live made me appreciate her music far more than I already did. They're my albums of this year. It's a total of nine albums. I feel like 2017 has been a real big year for music for me. I've never really put much thought into how, how many albums I listen to throughout a year and I never really reflect on them. I guess. Just quickly want to say again that these have been my albums of the year in no real order aside from Lord and Portugal the Man. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, what music have you been listening to a fuck ton of this year? Uh, what band or artist or song in particular did you fall in love with this year? And did you get to see anyone live? Yeah, that's, that's all from me for now. Let me know what you think about this video in particular too because this is the first type of video like this I've done and I would like to get some feedback because maybe I'll do it again sometime but better depending on feedback and stuff like that. Yep. Anyway. Okay.